Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. Amalgam Comics Month comes to a close with a bad comic. As it should. Yeah, some of you might be wondering why we're not ending with, say, Amazon, the fusion of Wonder Woman and Storm, or even JLX, show off a combined team book from the line. But no, ultimately this show is still about bad comics, and while I thought Dark Claw sucked, it wasn't that bad in the grand scheme of things. A fusion that kinda worked, but the characters didn't really gel with their respective place in their universe. The story and plot just mediocre and leaning into some of the more boring parts of the 90s. Assassins, conversely, features some of the most nonsensical combinations of amount with a bad story and terrible artwork, combining many of the worst parts of the 90s. Dude, I think you mean the best parts of the 90s! Blood and guns and sexy babes and non-stop action! We needed an example of some of the wasted potential of Amalgam. Sure, the whole thing was a novelty, but then why waste time on this instead of something with the Fantastic Four? Why not a parody of event comics featuring all these characters you established as one last hurrah before Marvel vs. DC would undo it all? And yeah, this is the one where people, for years, was the reason why they wanted Amalgam comics to be covered. To see me eviscerate something that bad. The only other one people really wanted me to cover was Doctor Strange Fate, which... Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. That one's not bad exactly, it's just another example of waste. It's a straight-up tie-in to the events of DC vs. Marvel and trying to prevent the Amalgam universe from being undone. Sure, it gave a little more time for one of the central characters of the crossover to develop, but they were only doing 12 of these books and they used one up on that. And then another on this. I don't know, maybe Catwoman and Electro were doing really well sales-wise and that justified it. And yeah, that's who we're combining. And yet, given the Catwoman connection, why wasn't Jim Balance tapped for this and instead the Batman one? Whatever. Let's dig into Assassins number one and see what this is about. <laughs> The cover is not great. Our titular assassin standing in front of a brick wall with the lady in red here requiring very special note thanks to her body contorting so that we can see both of her ass cheeks and her breasts at the same time. No wonder her ponytail is up like that. Clearly she's trying to whip her upper body around. Is she part snake? Is that the deal? She's an amalgamation of Electra and a snake? And why doesn't she believe in wearing a bra? I do love one thing about this cover, all the bullet holes behind them. Every single one of those those numerous shots missed these two. What happened here was a miracle, and I want you to fucking acknowledge it. And oh yes, Electra is in here, but not her. The lady in red is not an Electra fusion. That would be this other woman who's definitely taking on more of the Catwoman aspects, particularly with her headdress helmet thing. Like, is it actually a tiara or crown just kind of sitting on top of her head with the fang bits extending behind her ears? She goes by the name Catsai, which. Okay, credit where credit is due, that's actually really kind of clever. Wordplay on the idea of a cat's eye, while also her primary weapon is a sigh. It works. So who the hell is this she's partnered with then? Oh, you're gonna love this. This is Dare. She is the fusion of Daredevil and Deathstroke the Terminator! You can see that most evident with the hair, the eye patch, and the sword of all things. Yeah, this is a little detail that I don't know if they've kept around, but Deathstroke actually had a very unique sword design up to the 2000s, and it's very distinctive and recognizable here. Otherwise, yeah, Dare here, 
No idea why the hell they decided the fusion of two guys creates sexy, big-boobed, brawless, twisty body woman, but here we are! I mean, if DC or Marvel wants to reveal something about either character, go right ahead. I didn't put this trans flag Cybermat up here to not be supportive, it's just unexpected is all. Anyway, I guess we should get to the actual story. We open with Cat's Eye stabbing a dude through the back in an homage to Elektra's murder by Bullseye. And in this case, the fusion is Deadeye, combining him and Deadshot. Not a bad pairing, honestly. Dare and Cat's Eye are back in town. Tickets on sale now! Let's hope the city's stocked up on body bags. Ugh, they would, but the supplier decided to generate artificial scarcity, so everybody wants to buy body bags as soon as they come in stock. I don't know why, but this just feels right. The stabbing, at least. My back, on the other hand, will never feel right again. The corpse in the making is Deadeye, a killer infamous for never missing his mark. The ladies used him for target practice on their way to murder the mayor of Gotham. Considering they stabbed him instead of shooting him, you can tell how well that went. Why is it that Dare actually looks like she's on a pirate ship? And hey, she may not have a bra, but at least she has boob socks. The why is your a ninja getting off on murder, cat's eye. Don't dare get self-righteous on me. He was working for the mayor. Deadeye would gladly have done the same to us. Or worse, force us to read YouTube comments. Tell me you hadn't dreamed of hitting the bullseye with him before, Slade. Wait, she's still named Slade? What is that short for? Sladeena? Because of what he did to my eye? I was blind before that, Electra. Turns out this eye patch gets great reception. I'd have to be blind to agree to this lunatic's job. Arkham Tower is not my idea of a good time. Look, just because that one time had a terrible open mic night... We cut to Arkham Tower and... I'm just really hoping this shot is meant to be a kind of warped perspective kind of thing, because it feels like this tower is like 300 stories tall. But let us meet the mayor of New Gotham, Enigma Fisk, a.k.a. Big Question, a.k.a. the combination of the Kingpin and the Riddler. Which is really weird in my opinion. Yes, the more obvious choice would be Wilson Fisk and Lex Luthor, but let's be real, that fusion would have been too similar. But then why go with the Riddler? I like the Riddler, but it's combining a much smaller time crook who has a very specific compulsion and motivation to outsmart the smartest man ever with the most powerful, or at least most well-known, crime lord whose motivations are more about accumulating wealth and power. Doesn't quite gel in my brain. It's not a terrible idea, but, but it's a weird one. Like, if Two-Face was mixed with Norman Osborn, I... Huh. Actually, I kind of like that idea. What do you think his campaign slogan was with a name like Enigma Fisk? Why haven't you voted for Fisk? It's a real enigma. Anyway, it seems that the two assassins are making their way up Arkham Tower Game of Death style. How is a skyscraper like a shovel? Uh, by digging up, stupid! The two of you can use either one to dig your graves. I don't think you can use a skyscraper to dig, man. Maybe if you're Galactus. They're ten stories away, and he's eagerly awaiting their arrival. Back with the assassins, I just noticed that they actually have two... Well, I hate to sound mean, but kind of ugly cats with them. It's like Scott McDaniel couldn't decide if they were cats or ferrets and just split the difference. Or he amalgamated them, whichever. Deadeye was number twelve. How many more mercs do you figure between us and the big Q? Fisk thrives on questions. Let's not play his game. It, what? It's totally inapplicable to anything that's going on here. It's dumb. Like, how the hell is asking how many more opponents do you think we have to deal with playing his game? They were trying to break into an elevator shaft, and thanks to Dare's hyper senses, she detects an explosive and is able to get them away from before being hit by it. They're attacked by Lethal, the combination of Wonder Woman villain Cheetah and Craven the Hunter. Hired on to hunt big question, eh? Maybe it's your pretty hides get skinned tonight. You're looking at all the skin you're getting, freak. So you'd better get a good look at my butt because this thing is riding up hard. An experiment gone to the devil toughened Slade Murdoch's body, but took her sight. And let's not even get into what it did to her nostrils. She doesn't miss it, or much else. An internal radar tracks the Hunga Munga blades. Okay, that sounds fakey, but that term is actually a thing. 
Mind you, when I looked up Hunga Munga blades, they look more like this instead of the machetes and sides that Lethal threw. I didn't even know this was a thing. It looks like the multi-tool of bladed weapons. Anyway, Slade catches the knives Lethal threw and tosses them right back at him. It's all in the reflexes. Slade Murdoch is called Dare for two reasons. Trademark, and because Dare strokes sound stupid. The dares she takes. The double dog dares. And few dare to go up against her. Also, the experiment made it so that she's constantly hearing the Stan Bush song Dare playing on a loop, and you kind of get sick of that after a while. Cat's Eye is also able to trip lethal with her cats. Cat's Eye's felines are schooled in mayhem. So, they're cats. Trained to be underhanded and underfoot. Okay, if her cats are trained, that's honestly the most impressive thing about her so far. Big question told me to ask. How's a shotgun like a snowbank? They both have two barrels! Look, I don't think this guy actually thinks through these riddles very well. They both stop you cold! Especially if you live in Fawn Circle. Cat's Eye is able to evade Lethal's shotgun blast. Electra Kyle dodges the firestorm with Shadow Warrior Grace. She trained under Lo Wang? And slashes back with Dominatrix Passion. I mean, that certainly explains this pose she's in. Anyway, with Lethal tied up, Dare stabs him. And Dare delivers the death stroke. Get it? Get it? Get it? Meanwhile, Big Question is watching a news report featuring Jimmy Urich, which is really weird because we already know that Jimmy Olsen exists in this universe in Super Soldier. It's one thing to separate Batman and Bruce Wayne, their different personas, but how do you have Jimmy Olsen on his own, but also have him fused with Phil Urich? Jimmy Urich here with a WNGN editorial. Anyone else see a problem that we've got a convicted felon in office? This kind of thing is more suited to Washington. What's funny is, despite a joke referencing the real world that I could be making right now, I don't even have to. This is an evergreen problem. Jimmy talks about rumors that Dr. Strangefate manipulated voters to put Big Question into the mayor seat, which Big Q does not take kindly to, smashing the TV screen with his hand. I ask the questions around here. Question one, why did I do that? I now have broken glass in my hand. In a splash page, we see our murderous heroines making their way up the elevator shaft, killing goons along the way, while the narration talks about the history of the tower. That it was built atop the remains of New Gotham's Arkham Asylum, and instead of relocating the inmates to a new facility, they just... kept them there? It was deemed politically correct for the psychologically different to interact with day-to-day -day society. Yeah, damn those SJW soy boy politically correct woke cucks and their... insisting on murderers living in a tower instead of receiving mental health care at a mental health facility? Like, I have to extrapolate what the hell the narration is talking about. Like, the exaggeration of a position that, hey, maybe the prison system actually doesn't do anything to rehabilitate people and is built on a foundation of exploitation and dehumanization and should be changed, just means, LET MURDEROUS MONSTERS RUN WILD IN THE STREETS! It is a weird thing to suddenly have in this comic, which is about two murderers trying to go up and murder someone, but it's okay when they do it, because the person they're killing is a criminal, and criminals should have rights, lol. It's also okay because they're hot. There's a flashback to the experiments done to Dare, though it takes me a second to realize that's what's going on, because all the big question scenes have this green tint to them, so when the sequence has the green tint, I just kind of assumed they had reached him, but Dare was inexplicably tied to an operating table. How is a beautiful woman like a hot summer day? Both hit you hotter than expected? Both taste better with a little ice cream. Or better yet, you scream! Such bravado, even under the knife. You always were such a daredevil. GET IT?! Cat's Eye in the present notes that they don't actually know who hired them to kill Big Question, which 
seems like a bad call for assassins to accept, since otherwise how do they know who to go to for payment? Anyway, they encounter their next opponent, Wired, a fusion of Cable and the DC character Manhunter. Admittedly, not being familiar with Manhunter, I probably wouldn't have known this if not for the oh-so-subtle narration, once again poking to see if we get it! A Manhunter built out of flesh and machine, strung together with cybernetic Cable. You know, none of the other Amalgam books felt the need to do this. At best, you had Spider-Boy saying, Man, wouldn't it be wacky if Doc Ock was my enemy? But that was supposed to be a fun action comedy. This is supposed to be a dark, violent, grim and gritty story, and every single wink-wink, nudge-nudge about who they're mixing together comes across more like they assume the audience is stupid. Like, I'm waiting for someone to actually say out loud, Man, Big Question is such a Riddler! The kingpin of riddles! Anyway, Wired and his very pointy outfit. Like, he saw Dark Claw and decided, Yeah, I can make this sillier. A bunch of razors on my huge shoulder pads, a big spiky blade on my wrist. Also, I'm dressed like I'm from the X-Men, even though the X-Men aren't a thing. There. Sure glad I don't look stupid in this. I'm getting just a little tired of Enigma's toy soldiers. And when I get tired, I sleep for 18 hours a day because I'm a cat. No, she gets cranky! And part of being cranky is tossing him through big metal doors with Wired now impaled on his own stupid spike thing. Avon calling. Wired's blood will make a great beauty product. And my image can so use a makeover. You two lovelies, though, just as shapely as ever. Dude should not be describing other people as shapely when I'm not even sure how the hell to describe his shape. Big question reveals that he hired them to assassinate him. We just clawed our way up 107 stories. Our patients ran dry in the lobby. By now, it's all over town. Doctor Strange Fate enchanted Cat's Eye and the Dare to murder me. A little white lie. Those bodyguards you laid waste just added to your already stone-cold esteem. Now I butcher the two of you, and my reputation is reborn. I beat you, and I beat him. No question that Enigma Fisk is now Gotham's power. Even if you do get to me, at least I die in a fight, not as some magician's pathetic stooge. That's a stupid plan! You're already the mayor of the town! Clearly you're not actually under Strange Fate's control since you orchestrated this plan and tried to ruin his reputation in the process, so all they have are unsubstantiated rumors that lead to nothing! And your big plan is basically, hire these two to murder me, as they have proven they are quite capable of doing since they just went through 107 stories worth of mercenaries, traps, and bodyguards! Not to mention you just wasted all that money not only on all the bodyguards and whatnot, but damage to the tower itself with your explosions! And given how tall this place is, an explosive is not something you want to have in any part of it if you want to keep it standing! And sure, you might be able to salvage your reputation by killing your assassins, but who knows how well they'll maim you in the process! And even then, you're already a convicted criminal! Even if they believe that Strange Fate sent them to assassinate you, all it will mean is that one criminal is trying to kill another criminal! Riddle me this! How is this character like a sea lion? Answer! Both involve stupid questions. Dare gives not one rat's ass about this and charges forward, but it's apparently a trap. Big question triggering a metal wall to come slamming down to separate the two assassins. I'm not sure how that's really a trap, especially since it's not well drawn. Kind of looked like she was supposed to be falling into a trap door or something, but nope. Big question easily tosses aside Dare's sword and breaks one of her sticks before grabbing her by the head. Try this one. What did the performing unicorn say to the trumpet? Hey, are you trying to horn in on my act? Okay, that's not a riddle, that's a joke. Not a bad one, though. He rips off the horns from her head, which apparently were genetic modifications he inflicted on her. Not sure why the addition of horns was necessary for his experiments exactly, but a better question is how he even gets a grip on them when they're very tiny and his hands are larger than her head. My, all that blood and bone and yellow oily goo. I... 
I, I don't remember us putting that in there. What the hell is that? As she collapses, Big Question goes to kill Cat's Eye, but thanks to a ventilation shaft was able to get on the other side of the wall and planted a bomb that goes off in his face. Mind you, once again, it took me a bit to figure out that that's what was happening, since for a second I thought him looking at the wall was him expecting to see her there, as if he had closed the wall with her on his side, which would be really weird that she didn't go and help Dare then. She emerges from the hole she blasted. Oh, did Kitty make a mess outside her litter box? Sorry. You'll suffer for that tramp! Electra Kyle's heard worse than this kingpin of riddles spits out. Oh my god, I was kidding! We get it! While the two fight, the narration talks about her backstory. Growing up on the streets of Cairo with only stray cats as companions, learning how to survive by emulating their cunning and ferocity. Even when Daddy became the Egyptian ambassador to the US and the way of life went up, Electra never forgot the hard lessons she learned as a girl. One hard lesson is apparently you can go from poverty that forces your daughter to survive on the streets of Cairo by emulating cats right into the Egyptian ambassadorship. What? Ambassador Kyle's murder was a devastating blow to his daughter. It led her to a school of ninjutsu, where old cunning and ferocity found a home. Oh, yeah, of course. Whenever an ambassador dies, their children are shipped off to become ninjas. Cat-themed ones at that. As a demonstration of this, the ninja-style dancer. The dare was my... she was my good friend! Just gals being pals. However, instead of stabbing him, she smashes the hilts of her sides into his eyes. Since killing him would just buy into the narrative he pushed, she decides on an alternate plan. She contacts Jimmy Yurick to get him out in a helicopter to show Big Question hanging unconscious from the tallest point of Arkham Tower. And apparently the photo of that is enough to ruin his career. And so our comic ends with Cat Sai walking away with her cats. Now there's not even enough respect to be a stooge. It doesn't balance the scales, fat man, but it'll do while I come up with more creative tortures. Like reading this comic again. Next, the dare dead, cat sigh on the prowl, and we're not even at issue number two yet. Somehow I doubt you would have lasted long even if this hadn't been a one-shot because this comic sucks. I don't know if this is the worst comic from Amalgam, but it's definitely the worst of the four we've looked at this month. It's a boring, bog-standard 90s action book. The plot is a thin veneer for characters to scowl and make high-energy poses that are supposed to be impressive, but just look goofy. The tiny bits of backstory we get aren't interesting and make little sense when you actually think about them. The attempts at winking at the audience about the combination characters just gets annoying instead of playful or humorous. Not that I'd find anything playful playful or humorous about this anyway, since if you remove the fact that this is an amalgamation of DC and Marvel together, there is nothing of substance here. Nothing compelling enough to make you want to read more of it. Like, the best you've got is one of the main characters dying in the first issue. But I hate to say it, friggin' Animax did that better! The fusions they made in this one are oftentimes baffling or just feel like leftovers. Like, oh man, we still have Cable and Manhunter around, let's shove those together and kill them off one page later. The artwork sucks too. I'm already not a fan of Scott McDaniel, but I get the appeal at times. But here he's just mired in standard 90s tropes. I didn't even mention how everyone's feet, when we see their feet, are just shaped like yams. Awful. Amalgam was an interesting experiment and one I wouldn't mind them revisiting in the future. Though of course it's doubtful they ever will. Not every concept worked perfectly, but it was still a fun idea and they tried to make it work despite the results not always being that great. Even the direct rivals of DC and Marvel were willing to work together to produce something fun for their mutual benefit. But nowadays, corporate greed would never allow it to happen. 
If one company isn't making all the money, it's not worth it to them. But hey, maybe I'm wrong and we'll see a return to Amalgam, like Miles Morales and Jaime Reyes becoming Blue Spider, or Kamala Khan and Cassandra Kane becoming Dark Marvel or something. We'll probably revisit the Amalgam universe in years to come, but for now, this theme month is over. Next time, we head over to a different thought experiment we've been covering, the next chapter of DC Challenge. Okay, well that cat in the final panel just looks like a rat. What the hell? Hello my friends, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications on new video releases. If you'd like to support future videos, you can check out my Patreon or purchase a t-shirt via Teespring or Shark Robot. Thanks for watching!